Hey everybody, welcome into this week's episode of Tony's Spot on Fishing. I'm your host, Tony Krizek. Mother Nature has finally given us safe ice. It's our first ice trip of the year. And we're gonna show you some tips, tricks, and techniques of how you can catch these fish on first ice. We're actually focusing on some smaller bodies of water, little subdivision ponds that you can go out and ice fish in your own neighborhoods. We're gonna show you how to catch bass, bluegills, maybe even a crappie or two. You never know, we've even got cats through the ice before. This is how we pond fish through the ice this week on Tony's Spot on Fishing. What we have out here today on the ponds, we got about four or five good solid inches of ice, so it's plenty safe. Now, as always, you know, before you get on the ice, uh, even on these subdivision ponds, make sure you walk out a few feet offshore, drill a test hole, take a spud bar with you, and pound out too if you like. Safety is the biggest key, first and foremost, especially early on in the ice season. The last thing we want is anybody falling through the ice. Make sure you got a good solid four or five inches. Technically, a lot of guys will tell you three inches is more than enough. I'll tell you what, I'm about 275 pounds, and honestly, I don't feel comfortable on three inches. So if you get, uh, you know, four or five inches for us bigger guys, plenty of safe ice. And what we've done here today, we've actually set up some tip ups. We got our tip ups out with some minnows, and we're running our tip ups on a break line. This pond maxes out at about nine feet in depth total. So we have one at about seven and a half, almost eight feet, and we have one right at about seven feet of water. And I positioned myself fairly close to with my jigging rod here to both tip ups. So if a flag goes off, I can easily run quickly to them. I don't have to travel a long distance to get to my tip ups. And what we want to do, we'll play around with the depths on those tip ups. So we're going to actually have uh, the first one that's in a little deeper water. We got set at about right at about six and a half feet. And we've got, whoops, I just missed one on my, uh, my jigging rod there. And we also have the shallower tip up. We're actually going to, uh, to have it about six feet. Now, if we don't get bites in about a half hour, 45 minutes or so, we're going to go ahead, raise them up, and get, see if we can get some of those suspended fish that are near the break lines. The thing you want to focus on, two main areas of structure on these ponds for ice fishing. Your break lines out to deeper water, and then also those same shallow flats. Now we don't want to go too shallow, but if we have a flat that's you know four or five feet deep, that's what we want to focus on too for those key feeding areas that we fish during the open water months on these ponds. Those fish still relate to it and they're still up looking for food. But we're starting on the break lines first. We'll play around with some depths there. And right here I'm jigging. And what I'm actually doing, when you start your jig process, what I'll do is actually go all the way down to the bottom and basically just reel up just a couple cranks and then we can start jigging. And basically jig a couple times, hold it, and we can work our way up in the water column. But it's always best to start deeper down and work your way up until you start consistently getting bites. There we go. Oh yeah. Little bluegill there. These ponds are nice in the fact that you can catch all kinds of panfish in them. A lot of these ponds have bluegills, crappies. Uh, some may even have some smaller perch. That's just a little guy. We're going to go ahead and get him back. And, uh, you know, we can, we can pass the time while we're waiting for a tip-up to go off by jigging up some of these panfish. And you'd be surprised, too, how many bass you'll catch on a little jig. I mean, we're just running a little tea tiny ice jig right here, and we're just tipping it with a single wax worm. But you'd be surprised how many bigger largemouth, that I mean, we're talking bass up to three pounds even, that'll eat this little tea tiny thing. So sometimes you just get it right in front of their face, tease them enough, and you can get some of those bigger fish to eat too. But definitely, you have a blast, get the kids out, you know, especially pick your days when it's a little nicer out if you don't have a, an ice shanty. 
and you can come out here and, and bring the kids, catch bluegills and crappies through the ice, set some tip-ups out, get a few bass going. It's just, it's a great way to introduce the kids into ice fishing is just fishing these neighborhood ponds like this. See if we can get another one to go here. So again, we're just off the bottom with it. What we'll do, we'll just give it a little shake. Now the bite was a little bit less aggressive and if my cameraman can get a shot of it, what I have on the end of my rod is a little spring bobber. And that spring bobber will really help on those light bites. So basically, it's under a little bit of a load right now, so it's got a little bend to it. But if a fish should come up and grab my, my bait and swim up with it, my spring bobber will go totally straight. Oops. Now you can see when we jig it, how that spring bobber will load up. But what's nice is on those real light bites, if you can't feel it, if you're wearing the heavier gloves, you can see that spring bobber move and detect your bites that way. So it really is effective when you're fishing panfish and you're fishing these light bites if the fish aren't super aggressive right away. That's definitely a good thing to have on the ends of your rods of those spring bobbers. Help you get a lot more fish. A lot of guys always ask me, what I like to run, if I, if I run spikes or do I run wax worms? And yeah, the answer is both. Um, early on in the, the ice season, I generally seem to have better success with a wax worm. It's got a little bigger profile to it. We just hook it right through the tail. You can see this particular plastic I got has a little teaser tail too. So when that's in the water, it's gonna give me some nice undulation to it. And just gives us a little bit bigger profile helps bring those fish in, you know, your bigger panfish and even some of your bass will even come up on a bait like this. But we just hook it single right through the tail. This way we get a lot of motion to it. Don't really need to ball it up. We start balling them up, we're going to lose the gap of our hook. There's not much gap to these little ice jigs. So we definitely want to keep that in place so we can actually stick these fish. Let's see, let's get it back down in that hole. See if we can't get one more. There we go, I've hit bottom. So I'm just gonna reel up the slack till I get tension. Now I'm gonna just lift up. So basically you can use that as your, your gauge. If you follow it down, Right when we meet the, the water at the edge of the hole, we know we're on bottom right there. So now we can start to fish our way up. Now the few bites we've had this morning have come nearer the bottom, just in that six inch to 10 inch range, and there we're getting a bite. There we go. You see it was just a nice, easy lift up. There's a little better bluegill. But we really don't need to set the hook hard on these fish, you know. These ice rods have a lot of uh, a lot of give to them, and they'll actually do a lot of the work for us. But there's a nice little bluegill, and on these light ice rods, they sure are fun. Oops. But yeah, when we set the hook, like I say, you look at these these tips on them. There's a lot of give to it. Now there is some backbone to this. You know, it's about that third guide. That backbone does kick in. So if we hook a little bigger fish, I'll be able to play them out and handle them. But really, when we lift up, you know, just a nice easy lift, and that rod will load up and it'll stick that fish for us. We don't need to do a big sweeping hook set. Just nice and easy, you'll get them almost every time. So once again, we'll go right back on down. There we go, we're on bottom. Reel up till there's tension. And a lot of questions I get asked too quite a bit, you know, from guys are, you know, how, uh, how aggressive do we need to jig, you know, and, and it varies. There's times, uh, even for your panfish species, you know, we'll just do a little bit of a shake of the rod tip and integrate some pauses to it. Um, at times, they want it what we call like a dead stick, where it's basically just sitting right in front of their face. Other times, we may want to just kind of roll our wrist a little bit, get a little hop, and again, integrate some pauses. But play around with it and see what the fish want that particular day. 
just like in an open water scenario, you know, we have different presentations that we can do, fast, slow, different actions, wide wobbling baits versus more flash baits, things of that nature, rattles, no rattles, high vibration, low frequencies. Same goes with the ice. You know, these fish will still go through moods. Weather still affects these fish through the ice as well. So play around, find the size of jig that works best, play around with your retrieves as far as how you're jigging it. Is it a more of an erratic action, more dead stick? And also play around with, uh, with your levels in the water column. If you guys have a flasher unit, you know, that does make things a little bit easier if you're running electronics. You'll be able to actually kind of see on, on your electronics where those fish are at. And at times that can be a lot more fun for the kids too because they can just go out and uh, actually see the fish. It's almost like uh, playing a video game, if you will. But uh, today we know this pond pretty well. We know uh, all the depth contours. We've been fishing it for quite a few years, both open water and through the ice. So we're, we're just going out kind of blind right now, but we know the, the area well enough and we can play around and, and still catch some fish. So if you don't have an electronic unit, you don't need to go out and buy one unless you really want one. You know, it does help, especially on bigger bodies of water. If you guys are going out to the Fox Chain or Shabinaw, uh, anything like that, definitely if you got one or if you have a buddy that has one, borrow it, use it. But on these little ponds, you can just come out and just start fishing and catch them. What do we got here? Oh my goodness, now we're going the right direction. That's another nice one. Yeah, boy, that's pretty colorings too. They're getting that orange, little gold and green mixture. They sure are beautiful, beautiful creatures. And these subdivision ponds, you know, we like to throw all these fish back, but uh, you know, if we were on the chain or some of the forest preserve lakes where it's it's legal to bring some home, absolutely. You know, there's nothing like a good bluegill or crappie fish fry. Well, these little little ponds like this, go ahead and throw them back and catch them another day. Nicer gill. Thank goodness I had my spring bobber on that guy because. Boy, he just sucked it in. You never know. And the bite will change throughout the day. There's times it'll be this real subtle bites where they're just sucking a bait in. And then there's times that uh, they'll crush a bait. You know, and like I said, a lot of it is weather related. We are uh, in a bit of a cold front here. We've had uh, a little break for just a, a day or two where we warmed back into the 20s. And now we're, we're back into the frigid stuff where we're at about 19 degrees for a high today, they're saying. And uh, going to be a bit of a wind chill today and tomorrow. So just like uh, in open water season, the cold front will, will slow these fish down a little bit. And that's where that spring bobber really comes into play to detect in those light bites. Oh, tip up, tip up. flag went off here. Unfortunately, nobody on the end of the line there. But that'll happen. Ran off a little bit of line on us there. So we'll go ahead and reset this guy. That is a good sign. Even though we missed that fish, at least we know we found some right in the area. And we actually ended up moving this tip up to a little shallower water. Uh, we're actually in about five and a half, six feet closer to the edge of that feeding shelf like we were talking about. 
and we're actually running these tip-ups maybe about four and a half feet down keeping them about a foot off the bottom it's a good sign we got a flag up already we know we got some active fish here we can reposition and get on them and catch more there we go oh yeah all right Warm mouth. These guys are fun. I'll tell you what, these warm mouths, they fight hard. They kind of look like a bluegill. They're similar to it, but if you see, if I can get him to open his mouth, he's not really happy with me right now. Come on. But he's got that real big mouth to him. Much bigger than a, a regular bluegill would have. But they're really cool. They fight really hard and uh, really cool looking fish. Whoop, come on. There he goes. Maybe. Down he goes. Well, that's cool. We'll add that to the list of uh, other species you might find in these little ponds. A little warm mouth. Yeah, get me another waxworm. Oh, look at that. He even took my uh, little plastic tail. I got to get a whole new jig all together. <laughs> there we go. Oh, not quite the bass we were looking for. <laughs> Hopefully that, uh, those will get a little bit bigger than that. <laughs> Whoops, get back in there. Good to see natural reproduction uh, happening on these little ponds. It's a good sign. They're definitely all fun, no doubt about it. And what I actually did, since that warm mouth decided to uh, take my plastic with them, I actually went to uh, a little demon jig, and uh, just to give it that little bit bigger profile on a bait like this, it's silver on one side, purple on the other, I actually put two wax worms on there. And this way we can get that little bit bigger profile. When you do that, you tend to eliminate some of the smaller fish, you know, the smaller bluegills, what we kind of nicknamed the potato chip size guys. And this way you can kind of catch a little bit better quality fish with that little bit bigger bait like that. Let's see if we can't get another one to go. There we go. Oh, little guy. Little guy. But what do I always say? They're all fun. Cool. Another nice little gill. Not a bad little guy. Get him on back. Let's get down there and get another one. There we go. Now we're kind of getting into them here. There's another little guy. There we go. Oh yeah. That's a nicer bluegill right there. When we start getting them that size, that's when they become real fun. That's a good little guy. 
Actually, what I did there, I did a little trick here. Rather than just running one waxy or two waxies, I actually end up tipping that jig with a little gulp of live waxy and then the real thing too. So it gives us a little extra added scent in the water. Plus, they'll get the uh, the actual meat of that waxworm as well. So that's another little thing you guys can uh, try out on the ice this year, just to give them a little extra scent, so they got something to uh, help hone in on. Especially on a day like today, where the bite's been a little bit uh, a little sluggish, it'll definitely help you get some more bites. Oh, there we go. Another little guy. Well, we may have just dialed into that pattern today, tipping that uh, that jig with a little bit of that gulp as well as the real thing. Seems the bites are coming a little bit more aggressively here now that we've uh, we've gone to this tactic. And that gulp is really good stuff. It's it's a biodegradable material. It's not really a, a true soft plastic. So when it's in the water, it just, it's always breathing scent. And it's a great attractant to get these fish going. Whoops, just missed another one right there. Nice, another little bluegill there. And what we've done again, folks, we've made another little move on this pond, and the section we're fishing, it's the break line adjacent to a mud flat. And this mud flat, they'll use a lot in the springtime for spawning. And uh, they'll also uh, feed pretty heavily on it as well in the summer months. Now the mud flat itself is pretty shallow water. It's only maybe about, oh, three, four feet deep. So what we've done is moved right off to the edge of it. And we actually have one tip up sitting in about six feet. And we have one tip up sitting out at about eight feet. And where we're jigging at right here, we're at just about seven feet. So once again, key in on those areas that are close to your summertime haunts, those fish really won't venture too far. <coughs> oh yeah, she's there. Here we go. Oh yeah, come here girl. Just nice and easy up through the hole when she wants to run. Notice I'll just let that line slide right through my hand. Oh yeah, come here. There we go. Hand to hand combat fishing for these bass on tip-ups. This is so much fun. You know, it's always fun to catch them on a conventional rod and reel, but when you can come out here and do them on a tip-ups, go hand-to-hand -hand on them, they're just fun. You know, anytime you see that flag fly up, man, it just gets your heart racing. It's awesome. That's spot on fishing right there. Let's get this fish right on back. Oop, come on, let go of my thumb. And they swim off just fine. Just like in open water, only a little harder. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this week's episode and gave you a little insight on what you guys and girls can do to go out and get on the ice, fish these subdivision ponds that are right in your own neighborhoods. I'll tell you, there's bass, bluegills, crappies, perch, catfish. They got a little bit of everything in them. Come on out, get yourself some wax worms. If you want to try for a few bass, put some tip-ups out with the minnows. It's a great way to beat the cabin fever. 
get on the ice, bring the kids, they'll have a ball catching the panfish all right in their own backyards. That's all the time for this week. We got more great episodes coming from the ice coming up real soon on Tony's Spot on Fishing.